And Margaret, what are we doing down here at the Harbor Place tonight with the protest sign? We have a, a rally tonight in solidarity with the Strike Debt Rolling Jubilee because this week they announced that they purchased over a million dollars of medical debt from people in Kentucky and Indiana and they're forgiving that debt completely. So we're trying to raise awareness that we should not have medical debt in this country and that we have a health care as a human right campaign in Maryland to fight for a universal health care system. What's the name of that group again that's buying up the debt? It's called Strike Debt Rolling Jubilee and they have a website strikedebt.org. And they go out and buy up that's the people owe because they can't pay their medical bills. Right, right. This debt that they purchased is over a thousand families debt in uh, Kentucky and Indiana who uh, went into debt because they needed to go to the emergency room. And I've read some statistics on this bankruptcy thing. Right. It, it, it's like 60% or something like that end up because they can't pay their bills. A little over 60, 60 about 62% of people in the United States file for bankruptcy because of medical illness and medical debt. And almost 80% of those people had health insurance. So health insurance in this country is not protective if someone has a serious accident or illness. They're still financially vulnerable. The Congress passed the Affordable Health Care Act, right. which is also known as Obamacare. Right. When does that go into effect? Well, I, parts of it have gone into effect with the exchanges where people will be required to purchase insurance um, from these exchanges if they don't have insurance. That starts in uh, 2014. The exchanges will, will be up and running by October of this year, but people have to have insurance in 2014. And what's the criticism of that act? What do you think is really going to happen when it's implemented? Well, we could do a whole show on that, but basically, uh, by forcing people to purchase private insurance, you're forcing them to purchase a flawed product, something that doesn't protect them from bankruptcy if they have a serious accident or illness. And the way the law is structured, people are going to be pushed to be buying these plans that are very low benefit, low coverage plans. That This didn't used to be really, it wasn't used to be, it wasn't codified into law that these plans are acceptable where patients have to cover 40% of the covered charges. That's That puts many families either unable to afford care from the beginning in terms of the co-pays and deductibles they have to pay, or if they have a serious condition, it puts them really into bankruptcy. You hear stories about that. They said Massachusetts was kind of a trial run because right. they had a pseudo like a Bill. A very comparable bill, right. And what happened up there? Medical bankruptcies have not decreased. People continue to face financial barriers to getting care. Uh, very few people are using the exchanges in Massachusetts because it's not bringing down the cost of premiums. They, um, in order to find the money to subsidize people so they could purchase private insurance, they cut a lot of their safety net programs and that's hurt everybody because when, when the private hospitals won't take people, even people with insurance sometimes can't get care in these private hospitals, they usually would go to these safety net hospitals. Now the, those hospitals are struggling because their funds were cut. What's the remedy to all this? Well, that, it's very simple. It's what every other industrialized nation in the world has. It's a single-payer health care system that's universal, lifelong. It's automatic. We pay for it up front through our taxes. It would allow us to control our health care costs and improve our health outcomes. It's a, like a Medicare for all. And who would oppose that? Who's against that? Well, the majority of people are actually for it. You know, when you poll um, people, there's a solid two-thirds majority that support a national single-payer health system. Health professionals support it. It's just that the private industries that are profiting from our current system, like the private health insurance, the pharmaceutical, the private hospital corporations, they have a lot of influence over our politicians. That's the only reason that we haven't joined the civilized world and created a universal health care system. Where did this bill come from? It went through a series of five committees, but the main committee that was driving that process was the Senate Finance Committee. That's the one that's chaired by Max Baucus and Charles Grassley. And uh, the, the woman that was really spearheading that effort that Baucus hired, Liz Fowler, came from being a senior uh, vice president of public policy for WellPoint. She was a lobbyist for WellPoint, one of the largest insurers. And, and after she finished getting this bill that re was really a gift, to the health industries, um, and not 
for the people. She was then transferred to the Department of Health and Human Services to oversee the regulations. Um, so this, this bill has a lot of loopholes. We're not going to control health care costs with it. Employers are going to be dumping their employee benefits and people are going to be ending up with what we call underinsurance or skimpy health plans. So the insurance company's fingerprints are all over this. Oh, oh absolutely. Obama. Absolutely. They, they were from the very beginning. <laughs> And people will find out the hard way. Unfortunately, yeah. If people are taking a wait and see attitude, we already know what's going to happen. We have um, we have studies. We have the evidence of what happened is happening in Massachusetts to show us we're still going to have tens of millions of people with no coverage at all in this country. We're going to have more people who are underinsured and financially vulnerable. And it doesn't have to be this way at all. That's the crazy thing is that we spend two and a half times what the average industrialized nation spends per person on health care. We're spending more than enough to have a universal high quality health care system. But all that money is going up to these, you know, these big for-profit health corporations. And what can people watching this program do, like in Baltimore and our state, what can they do about it? Well, if, if you're in Maryland, we, we invite you to join the Healthcare is a Human Right campaign. We're modeled over uh, what they did in Vermont. We're building a grassroots uh, movement here in this in this state to push for a single-payer health care system. Um, so we would encourage you to get involved. You can go to mdsinglepayer.org or healthcareisahumanrightmaryland.org and learn more about the campaign and get involved. Anything else, Dr. Paul? I appreciate you being out here on a cold day. We're going to keep doing this until we finally get a healthcare system for everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks.